President Biden announced today that he will send Marines to bolster security at the U.S. Embassy in Haiti following the assassination of Haitian President Jovenel Moise. But Biden also signaled he will not grant Haiti's request to send U.S. troops to stabilize the country. He said this is a quote, not on the GE agenda. Meanwhile, in Haiti, authorities are denying reports that interim Pres uh, Prime Minister Claude Joseph or any other member of the Haitian government was involved in Moise's assassination. A Colombian-based television station broadcast earlier today that there was reason to believe Joseph was the mastermind behind the operation. The head of Haiti's national police has said that there is no evidence to support that claim. Robert Faton is the author of The Guise of Exceptionalism, Unmasking the National Narratives of Haiti and the United States. He's also a professor of politics at the University of Virginia. He joins us now to discuss the latest in Haiti. Uh, Thank professor, you for having me. Uh, absolutely, sir. Uh, this thing just gets more and more convoluted, and it is very hard to figure out which uh, kind of agency within each, which country is being honest with us. What is your take so far on understanding who, not only who was involved, but what the motive might have been in the assassination of the Haitian president? Well, the whole affair is extremely strange. First, you have the so-called mercenaries, the Colombian mercenaries, and some of them have been arrested and three of them have been killed. Then you have a series of Haitian Americans who come to the scene. Two of them were with the Colombians. Now, the critical problem that we have with the story, the official narrative, is that we have Colombian mercenaries literally entering the compound of the president's house getting into his bedroom and assassinating him and at the same time injuring his wife very seriously. Now, the problem with that is we don't have any evidence of the private security of the president fighting against the intruders. That's a very weird that, uh, that phenomenon. Is, sir, that is, sir, that is so important because I have been thinking that from the very beginning. Where was the firefight? Because this is not one person sneaking in and, you know, they can conceal themselves. This is two dozen people exactly. entering this man's house and into his bedroom. And there's no, no reports that I have seen of a firefight with the security. And this is why you have very strange questions and the radios in Colombia have asserted that there is some sort of an inside a uh, uh, plot, as it were, to kill the president or to remove him. Now, the other question, obviously, uh, when you look at the intervention of the Colombians, relates to the fact that if they were actually trained very well, if they were part of commando missions in Venezuela, then how in the heck would they assassinate a president, exit the house, and have no escape strategy? From what I gather from people in Haiti, some people saw them in the streets, in their trucks, after the assassination, in the early mornings. So you have to wonder, if that's an elite commando, what the heck were they doing staying in Haiti after killing the major figure of Haitian politics, the most powerful, arguably, man in Haiti? That makes stand it. And finally, you have all of those reports suggesting, and this is from Haiti, that it may well be that the Colombians got into the house of the president because they knew the security forces at the compound. And when they arrived, supposedly, again, this is just conjecture spe speculations, they arrived and they found the president dead. And that's why some people are saying that the Colombians were duped 
by the Haitian security forces at the very top of the security forces of Haiti or by the people who paid them commandeer the whole operation. And the whole idea that right. the operation was commandeered by that Dr. Sanon, for most Haitians, it's really absolutely bizarre. The fellow was not very well known in Haiti. He has a very peculiar background. He was bankrupt, apparently. And he would have the money to pay for an operation of 28 individuals who arguably from the press were paid $3,000 a head. How can you do that? That's another major right. question. And, so, and, and, but even as you say, you know, if there's speculation about whether or not they showed up and were able to gain access because they knew the guards, knowing the guards is one thing. What are two dozen people showing up to somebody's house at, 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 in the middle of the night for it. I get, there, there's no rash. What would be the rationale Absolutely. that would make this make sense? It just, right, it's a, it, it, every time we learn a new fact, it becomes more strange. It opens up whatever new thing we learn generates 10 more questions. More questions. Around, yeah. you know, but, but what is happening here. Before, I, and the theory would be that those Colombians entered in Haiti to protect someone of significance in the country. That's how they were okay. hired. So the assumptions of some Haitians and I, is that the Colombians were protecting the president and other authorities in the country. So therefore, they had access to the compound of the president, and they knew certain right. security people in the Haitian machinery. Now, the problem is that in order to kill the president, you really need to mm -hmm. penetrate to his house, penetrate into his bedroom. And from what I gather from Haitian sources, the president was protected like in a bunker in his own room. Right. So if he had opened right. the door to his room, that meant that he knew who was in the business at night. And this is yes. why there is uh, a so whole theory that there is some involvement of the security of the president right. in the assassination. Professor, I'm simply the out of time. I, 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 this, this, right. I, I'm out of, sir, I'm out of time. I'm sorry about this so much. Uh, uh, no thank problem. you so much for coming on and helping us to understand this a little bit more because we are scratching our heads every day. We learn, we every all... day we learn a new thing that makes it more yeah. crazy. But as it's this story strange. develops, I hope that you'll come back and keep us in, uh, keep us informed about what you know and what you learn.